What's going on guys, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I'm back with another unboxing video. Again, this one is a little bit later than I'd like to have been, but I was really sick last week, so uh, I couldn't get myself out to my local game store to pick them up, but as the title card may have told you, and the little image in the bottom, this is Dungeon Tiles Reincarnated. There are three separate sets of tiles, one, two, three. We're going to go through all of them, but I just wanted to show this. This is... A, uh, a great resource for um, veteran and new dungeon masters alike. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say uh, new DMs, this is gonna be good for you guys, especially people that don't have, um, they don't wanna shell out money for a mat, which I don't know why you wouldn't, to be honest. It's, you won't be a sorry if you do pick up one of these. <laughs> um, but specifically people who wanna do something a little bit, um, more customized, but don't want to go on full-blown Dwarven Forge terrain. So, right here I have the Wilderness one. So it says an accessory for the world's greatest role-playing game. Let's read the back. Add excitement to your D&D game with these full-color dungeon tiles. Easily, uh, easy to set up and infinitely expandable. These dungeon tiles allow you to create the adventure you want to play. The box contains 16 durable double-sided tile sheets featuring grasslands, ruins, sandy beaches, and other terrain elements that dungeon masters can use to stage exciting encounters. Use these tiles to make fantastic wilderness maps to enhance your role-playing, or your tabletop role-playing game. So each one of these runs about $25, so they're not exactly cheap, so keep that in mind. Um, you can get these now, I believe, on Amazon. Uh, previous uh, edition dungeon tiles were available at places like Barnes & Noble, so you may be able to get these there as well. I haven't gone to my local Barnes & Noble to find out, um, but they do come. You saw the plastic wrap and they have this kind of cardboard sleeve. They do come in these, this is a very nice, I don't know if you can really hear that, but this nice printed box, right? So here's the lid, a nice little box here. Uh, and then we have on thick cardstock there's inside the box here it's just a piece of cardboard but we have nice thick you can see here cardstock these dungeon tiles All right so let's go ahead and open these up so this is the wilderness set so again there are three different sets we can go we'll go over all of them They are uh, in perforated edges here, so you can pop them out. Um, they, my only complaint, and then it's not really a complaint because I kind of knew what I was getting when I bought these, is you don't technically have grid lines, right? So here's the first one. I'll turn this sideways so you can kind of get, hopefully you can get all of it in here. Um, you can see we've got like a crater here, and then we have like a little crater, we have a ballista, we have some logs and then on the other side it's different you can see this is sort of a filled in crater this is two guards we have some dead guards we have a broken ballista and a, like a palisade and as you can see it just sort of pops right out so it doesn't have traditional grids like you would have here you could lay a if you have a um like a cellophane uh, or one of the transparent grids where it's just a piece of plastic with the grid lines on it. You can lay that over top of it. But as you can see here, there are these little white X's and those sort of correspond perfectly. If I can get this uh, in here, you can see, like you can figure out where terrain is supposed to be. So this is one, two, three, where people are supposed to fit as far as uh, grid lines go. So we'll go ahead and pop all these out. So we can see again, here's our little guys and our logs and our busted up, our corpses. Here's our ballista and our broken ballista, and then our crater, and then a palisade. And then we just have this, this garbage. So this next one, we have sort of uh, what looks like maybe a busted up house or a secondary level. Uh, we have another level here. We have just a, again, more of a palisade. Here's a battering ram. 
and a staircase going down. On this side we have some tents, another tent, another crater, a little pond, and the building of a palisade. Let me go ahead and pop these guys out. Just be, bear with me guys, this is going to be a little long, we've got three of these to go through. Um, this one, we sort of just have an open field uh, with some rocks and things, and here we have a, a chasm or an opening in the, in the ground here. And on the other side, this side is now a little adventuring camp, right? The, this, the quality on these does not look great. The print, like this looks fuzzy to me uh, on these tents. Like you can see the campfire looks pretty crisp. But the tent looks kind of wonky. Uh, and then instead, as opposed to a chasm, we have a stream. So. Alright, we got a... There are several in here. So this, that's the good thing, is that you do have the option to mix and match. Uh, we have a little clearing with a little pool and a dirt road. And then here we have sort of like a... I guess like a Stonehenge kind of stone ruins and another stream. So we could always, you know, take our stream from before and connect the two to make a longer stream if we wanted to. Again, a way to add some customizability to your game without breaking the bank. And you can, again, as you can see, you get several. We have another sort of Clearing with some trees and a rock, we got more of a dirt road. And then here we have what looks like a broken down tower descending downwards and another piece of a stream. And like I said, you don't want to shell out a ton of money for Dwarven Forge or 3D print your own. This is not a bad way to go. I could definitely think of ways that, or, you know, the reverse way, rather than trying to retrofit these into your existing campaign, build your campaign around the tiles uh the maps that you're planning on doing you know okay well hey i have that really cool uh tower why don't i make this one a part of my map right here this one we've got uh, a bridge with a little pool and then we've got another water feature here and on the back we've got i guess this is just sort of like a rock maybe some kind of like raised lip and then here we have this sort of two level terrain, or perhaps this is a chasm. And then you can see some of these have these little triangles here. I don't know what the triangles mean. They don't actually say anywhere. And here we have sort of like a dock uh, by some water here. And then we have a boat. Turn it around here. Uh, looks like a raft, a piece of driftwood, and. I guess something covered up in rocks here. This like little platform covered in rocks. Ah, because on this side it was a statue of what looks like some sort of lizard or a gargoyle. Here's driftwood in water, the raft in water, and the, the uh, boat in water. And then here we have, again, two rocks and a small little water feature here. I think these, I think that these tiles, and I don't know because I haven't checked, I think the tiles are going to shine more in the city and the dungeon than the outdoor because I feel like these are a little bit easier to draw uh, outdoor scapes. So we sort of have the kind of sit almost like a second floor to that one we were looking at before where we have here's a stone floor, here's the wooden floor underneath, water, and then this one actually kind of continues together. And then on this side we have a bridge, and then again a kind of uh, grass-filled water feature. We still got a, f a bunch more to go, guys. So here we just have various water features, uh, different edges, so you can kind of make a larger watered area. And then here's the end of a dirt road. And then on this side we have, we can see we kind of have like a dock or a bridge coming to a little island. Uh, small little pool, here's another bridge, and then kind of an edge piece for uh, a lake or a pond. So you can start to see how you could mix and match these together to make a larger water area. Again, 
here like this one you could use it pretty much just like it is but we've got uh, a little bit of like a, a stream bed or an edge with some water here we've got a little bit of like an owl uh, island with some more water here's some grassy seaweedy water and then here's a uh, drift piece of driftwood and then here's basically sort of that but on land so here's the log on land we've got a log bridge uh, and then two rocks with some water and again some more ground and water I really wish I could I, I don't know what the purpose of the triangles are on some of these objects uh, and it doesn't like I said there is no real instructions included I'll double check in the box but do you see what I mean how there's like these white triangles on the various pieces. Some of these pieces have these white triangles and I don't know what they're there for. <clears throat> Here we have sort of a an outdoor ruin. And then up here we have, here's just like some bricks. And this looks like another crumbled statue and then a well. And then on this side we sort of have a grassy uh, a road leading to a grassy clearing, a couple of stone benches, some loose stones, and then a bush. Alright, this one. We have just, again, just trees. Uh, trees with a little bit of a clearing, kind of a dead broken tree some rocks and some dirt and some more trees and then on the back side here we have sort of an outdoor ruin you can probably guess that some of this goes together here right depending on how you want to connect the, the pieces um so we've got again a ruin with some dirt on it uh sort of it looks like i'm guessing this is a drop down the grass here and we have more of our ruin with the dark here more stone tiles all right, we got four more. Here's our desert, first desert tile. We have our desert with a big rock. Then we have, again, just a small desert tile, another rock, palm tree, and some water for your oasis here. A different side of the oasis. The rock's a little bit spread out with some dunes and then some more rocks, uh, more sand and then more rocks. I really cover the gamut on the wilderness here. This looks like this is all desert. So here's some more just desert terrain with a little bit of grass. And then here we have more of our oasis. We've got water. Here's a little pool with some palm type trees and then more sand and palm trees. Alrighty, we've got more sand, but this is on the edge of a forest. Uh, looks like a desert style tent and then some a little bit of a larger uh, boat here and then again here's a sort of a sand dune or something surrounded by water we have some more desert themed water terrain and then our last one we have some more rocky style deserts and then we just have some water with a little piece of a sandbar there you have it guys that was the wilderness tiles so we'll just check inside the box make sure there's nothing underneath nope no explanation like i said uh internet i'm sure you guys will tell me exactly what it is because you guys i'm sure know so if you want to go ahead and tell me what you think the triangles are for because i really don't know sorry for bumping the camera so we're going to put these away, these tiles, as we have several of these. The only problem being, I don't think we're gonna be able to put them away with this piece of cardboard inside uh, because they fit much better when they were all packaged up. So I think you gotta take the cardboard out if you really wanna get, and then probably stack these things in that. Well, this is, hey, this is part of the review, right? Let's learn as we go here. Put all of the big square tiles in first. Uh, see if we can fit them all in here because if you can't, then you're going to need a new version, a new thing for storage. All right, let's get our. And we're kind of on our half tiles now, I think. Uh, let's 
So you can fit the big square tiles we can see here, right? And then you get the half. You can't fit the half tiles on the side. They don't fit. That's sort of a poor design feature that they don't fit. These are indeed square, right? Let's just double check that, make sure that. Yep, nope, okay, so those don't fit. Okay, well, let's keep going. See if we can fit all these back inside. Because if they don't fit in the box, then that's just that's just poor design. Now we're down to our little square pieces here. Do these guys fit over here? Nope. Okay, well, we're really having some trouble with our... I mean, maybe they'll all fit and then they won't really matter, but as of currently, it seems like poor design. Okay, now we'll grab all our... These pieces will fit over here. Okay, so I think, just based on the estimates, we're gonna have plenty of room for all of our pieces. And then actually, and then some. So, okay. Well, that's good. That is a big benefit. So, as you guys can see, all of the pieces do fit in the box and we do have actually a fair amount of room. And we'll go ahead and put the lid on the box. Everything fits in there nice and fine. You could potentially, right, if you wanted, use the lid of the box as raised terrain, right? Because you've got, it's the same material. It's got the grid lines on it. So that is an option. All right, that is wilderness tiles reincarnated. Next up, we have dungeon tiles reincarnated. As I said, I think that these ones are gonna go a little bit better. Be, seem a little more universally useful. Let's just read it. Um, this box contains 16 double durable sided or durable double sided tiles featuring dungeon rooms, corridors, caverns, tunnels, and other terrain elements for staging and sighting encounters. All right, so it's pretty much the same wording. Um, you can see we have our standard gray dungeon tile as the outside of the box. Open that up. Similar to the inside of the other one, we know we can take out this because we know we're not going to need it. Keep our box off to the side, and then we've got our tiles. So let's see what kind of uh, dungeons we can send our parties into here. So, right off the bat, on our first tile here, we do not, this is not as big as the other tiles, because again, you're going to be you know, tiling these down to make a dungeon. So we've got this long corridor. This corridor with looks like a set of doors. Some more corridors. Then we've got smaller doors. And then perhaps some kind of portal or trap. And then, oh, look at the other side. Okay, here we got some bookshelves. Closed doors, a staircase, a hole, a chasm, a pit trap. Uh, looks like maybe a portcullis here. Um, this is a spiral staircase. We've got an uh, altar, another set of stairs, some supplies, and then some more doors, and then that's just a black tile. All right, so let's pop these out. And just because I was talking about it, we can kind of, I can show you what I mean, right? By why these are probably gonna be a little bit shorter. So we could kind of design a dungeon here, right? We've got our dungeon hallway that leads to, right here, is an open door. Inside this open door is a staircase, and that leads up to an altar, right? And then there are some crates over here, maybe, why not? And then off of here, there is, you know, like there's this thing, right? Which you like, oh no, it's a pit trap, or whatever or it goes up to a spiral staircase. You know, you can see how you can easily maneuver these to make whatever kind of dungeon 
scenario you want to have here's we can go here's our altar again right and you can see how you can make these up oh, this there's a chasm on this on this side right or uh let's, let's see do we have the actual chasm piece now that's on the backs of this one i think but you get the point all right it's an open door and it leads to a pit very cool stuff all right next one and again to further my point we can see we have angular corner pieces here so we have a corner piece this one's got a like a teleportation circle on it we've got a little statue another statue we've got these pieces with these either pits or potentially so these would be where your supports would be some more corner pieces and a straight piece here this piece is surrounded by blood it's like a little frog type uh, maybe dog statue just felt my phone beep let's make sure i didn't miss anything of importance like my wife yelling at me nope okay uh then here we've got a set of double staircases going around and here we've got a pot full of blue red liquid pot full of blue liquid and here's just a staircase uh, and then we've got some sort of magical miasma smoke this is just black on the other side of this guy so this is just just to represent the void or, or some other spot in between the dungeon on the side of this one. More staircases. This, again, more corner pieces. This time, rather than having supports, they've got weird kind of maybe this is a teleportation pad, right, to go between the two. That's really up to your guys' imagination what the pieces are for, which is very cool. Again, as I stated, perhaps this is a scenario where you build your dungeon around the tiles you have. Now this, just a bunch of blank tiles. And then on this side, we've got a nice staircase piece. Here we've got some bed rolls, right? Like barracks maybe, a uh, broken support pillar. This one's got all manner of light <coughs> shining in. So this one, <coughs> excuse me, you could do a light-based trap or something like that. And then we've got a little pool of water here. Be a reflecting pool could be uh, you know, a gelatinous cube see again this side just a blank tile and then on this side it's his bedrooms you know barracks very cool all right now we're starting to get to some interesting stuff we've got a big kind of circular piece we have a big wooden circular staircase this is a bookshelf here We've got some sort of, oh, this looks like an elevator, right? Here looks like this is a door and this is some kind of elevator, perhaps. And then on this side, or perhaps this is just a pit trap, right? Because the other side is just a pit. Uh, here we have some scattered books and scrolls. And then we have some more curved, uh, see look at these when they pop out, curved pieces. So you can get some interesting geography in your dungeon. Okay, we got some more curves here. I'm gonna assume there's gonna be enough to make a full circle. So some more curved tiles. Here we've got a spiral staircase, another door, and just a wooden staircase. And then again, wooden stairs, the other way, other part of the spiral staircase, and then more curved uh, pieces. So we could probably make a central, maybe a tower or a circular piece. Here we go, we got another piece of circular uh, stone, more staircases, pretty much the same on both, except this is a termination of the stairs at the bottom, or doors. And then we've got probably our final circular piece here. So this one here, we can see we've got some light shining and some windows perhaps. We've got some glyphs here on the floor and here's just a big circular glyph. And here the glyphs are red, so this could be if they're doing things well, they're blue. Flip them over because they screw up, now they're red. Again, more circular circular pieces so you can make a nice tower if you wanted. Oops, I forgot to pop out the door. There we go. Uh, now we've got, again, some more pieces, but this we've got kind of thin corridors here. And then on this side, all right, we've got a two sort of pits. Here's a water feature area. This 
Maybe this is your Indiana Jones leap of faith, right? You've got the blackness on either side. And then you've got this kind of dirt path here. This looks like this is lava over here. You can have some interesting different geography options. All right, here now we're probably down at the base level, right? This is unworked stone, or perhaps this is a cavern. Uh, just like some dirt and some rocks here. Again, more, this is probably more for your cave, right? So you don't have the walls here. It's not like a, it's not like a void that you're gonna fall into. It's just the darkness of the not, you know, where the parts are, where the walls are assumed to be of the cave. Again, we got some more cave pieces with perhaps, uh, I don't know, little growth of some kind. Again, more cave pieces. Nothing too crazy to write home about on the cave pieces here. Here we go. Some more caves. We do have a little black piece here, perhaps as a pit or a drop. And then on this side, we do have a chasm. We have some curved pieces. Dirt, stone. Here's some mushrooms. Here's a little pool of water. And a little more interesting here. Again, now we got some smaller pieces so you can make more interesting caves. Uh, now we have some underwater water feet, under uh, cavern water features here. So here's some water, here's a waterfall, some more water pieces here. Some, this looks like the natural steps uh, in the stone, and then this terminates here with some water on this end. These guys are. Back ourselves up a little. Sorry for the dogs, guys. Can't really help that. All right, and then we have. All right, we got some sort of tiled dungeon here. This is all. This is all one big tile, right? With the caverns on either end. A little light feature. We've got some eggs, some barrels, a uh, pit to lava, and just a pit. And on the back side, this is a cavern. We've got lots of mushrooms, and some water, and then some stone. Our first full-size tile. We've got three more. Some more ruins, perhaps temple area here. And then this says this is a cave. We've got some bones. Here's a like a carcass. A little campfire in the cave, you know, more supplies. This is maybe a mine, or, a, you know, like I said, perhaps this is a more surficial cave rather than a deep cave. And then we've got, got some spider webs in these caves here. And then again, here's some more caves. There's some bones, the skeletons. We've got some mushrooms in various places here. There's nothing saying you can't link up, because of the way the tiles are designed, you couldn't link up the wilderness leading into a cave from one of the, the dungeon tiles here. And again, we've got some more tiles. This time, some more angular pieces, though, with the black here. Spiderweb pieces. And then this side, we've got some more with mushrooms again. And we've got, like, a little cook fire up here. All right. Now these... There are significantly more pieces. Are these gonna fit in the box, right? Because they, we've got significantly more larger pieces and then strange shaped pieces because we've got all of the circular pieces and things. So this may, this one may prove a little more difficult see, because we've got pieces like this, which got little funky ends. So they're not gonna sit in the box straight these off to the side as we start to try to put all away our all our pieces yeah we've got curved you know diamond shaped pieces Let's see what we can do I mean with the amount of extra space we saw let's see we have we got these guys right we got all these semi-circular pieces that are clearly substantial in size I'm gonna guess that they are gonna fit though, just based on the fact that there was so much extra room in the um, the other tiles. 
So let's just see here. It looks like with some clever placement and some, you know, remembering back to my Tetris days, we may be able to fit these guys relatively snugly inside this box. Let's see. significantly more tile pieces, as I said, to go inside here. Again, sorry for the length of this video. Uh, did not realize initially how much stuff there would be to go over when I started putting this together. Uh, this video, there are a lot, there's a lot to go over. So this one's going to be much less neatly packed than the wilderness tiles. But, as you can see, there is plenty of room for all of the tile pieces and the lid. There we go. Alright guys, we are on to the last tile here, which is the city tiles. So um, this is again another one I think will get a lot of good use from folks because people may have mats, they even may have terrain for like caves and caverns and dungeons, uh, but I feel like city related things are fewer and far between um, in, in most of the games, at least in my experience, so people have uh, less stuff about this. So this is 16. Durable double-sided tiles featuring city streets, buildings, sewers, and other terrain elements. Other terrain elements doesn't really help us, but let's see what we've got. Okay. So, the lid is just some houses. Roofs of houses. Alright. We've got to take out our thing. We'll take out again our cardboard insert. I think I'm not needing that. Okay, so, city tiles, what do we have here? This is the one that I'm going to have the least concept about what we're going to have, because, I mean, I could kind of guess what was going to be in the dungeon and the wilderness tiles, but I really don't know what we're going to get. Alright, so it looks like we've got a city square of some kind, let's see if I can get this a little. So we've got, uh, looks like we've got like a fountain here. And then over here, we've got sort of maybe a, a waterfall into the fountain or a larger fountain. Uh, this is all one piece. So then on the back side, oh, okay, we've got actual like taverns, right? So here's the outside, the cobblestone street, some grass leading into the cat, the tavern here. And we've got our wooden floors, our staircase going to the upper floor. Here's our, here's our bar. And then we've got, you know, the back part of the tavern here. So, you know, you could have this could be your setup, right? Here's your here's your tavern, right? Maybe this is this the neighboring house that's connecting, or you just get rid of it. And here's the first floor of your little tavern. Or maybe this goes over here like this. You know, something like that. Very cool. All right, now we have uh, some more of our cobblestone. There are very nice streets here in, in our little city. Cobblestone streets with some little bit of water, and here's a drainage pipe down to the sewers. And then here are said sewers. We've kind of got some walkways here and some nasty green water, spider webs, it looks like, maybe some bones. And then here's our ladder leading up to the world above. We have our sewer tiles here. All right, we've got some wood floors for our tavern. We have more cobblestones with some water. Here's a set of stairs, more cobblestone. 
then we have uh, more sewer tiles, right? So here's a here's a drainage grate and some sewage in a long hallway. Here's a curve piece to go around a corner, and then we have a little wooden bridge here in our sewer. All right, the dock district by the city. Here, here's our drainage from our nasty sewer draining out into the water. And then some docks, there's some barrels and things here. And then we have, oh, it's just a house. Just the entire piece. Here's the front door, um, or, you know, whatever. Here's the hearth, cobblestone streets outside. A couple pieces here for other houses. If you wanna kinda of start to build the city. And the way this is broken up, you can expand to make your house larger. Front entrance to your house is only going to be so big, but we could go a little bit bigger if you wanted, right? Maybe the hearth is over here. You know, something like that. <coughs> uh, we have more dock district right here. Some more water with some building tiles on the edge here. Again, more housing. Uh, front steps, back steps, ways to make your little city or your tavern or whatever come to life a little bit more real than just, you know, lines on a, you know, lines on a piece of vinyl mat here, like over there. All right, let's see what else we have. We have some more stone style streets or at least stone corridors, perhaps. A uh, temple or a church because there's a cobblestone on the outside and then we have again more down by the docks There's a dock board. Maybe this is a dock tavern or the shipyard or whatever uh, Some more tiles down here All right, what do we got here we got here's another sewage exit uh, We have some more stone tiles. This looks like uh, Perhaps a wall or some sort of grate. There's a little small stone room. And then we've got some busted up ruins leading into one of these hallways. And this side, again, more uh, stone floors, or I'm um, sorry, wood floors for your houses. Here's again another entrance or perhaps an exit, and one that lies to the docks as well. Although this is all one piece, so more dock board based buildings. Oh, here we got a nice bridge here, a nice stone bridge with some statues going over a water feature here again, potentially down by the docks, more docks. And here's a, a darker kind of dank steps going down. Uh, and then again, more housing with uh, potentially uh, more stone streets or perhaps, you know, leading to different buildings Got here, more, more housing stone walkways all right here we go meat and potatoes stuff so we got here's just the entrance to a house here's some broken down stuff here's a sewage grate but here we've got here's an ox pulling a cart here's a horse pulling a cart we've got a little teleportation rune we've got some sort of fireplace or hearth inside of your uh temple maybe here's tables and chairs here's cutlery Broken front door, another table and a chair, and another broken front door. And then on this side, we've got just, you know, some more just wooden floors. We've got dank underground stone here with some bones and fur. And then we've got, uh, here's a stair or a ladder going down, a rickety bridge crossing over some gunk, uh, more st uh, tables. We've got a little statue here, some more supplies, broken in window or broken in, you know, tavern door. <coughs> this is good stuff. You're starting to see how you can start to build some interesting encounters with your city tiles. And it looks like we've got some more sewer. All right, here we go. There's a ladder down, some more sewage. This is a four, you've got a four way intersection, T intersection. Uh, and then on this side, we've just got regular old stone streets, again, with the sewer grate, larger pieces, so you can cover larger expanses. Uh, again, we have another sewage grate, which is a long piece. Here's our right angle, and then another uh, bridge. And then again, more 
cobblestone with some water and then a set of stairs perhaps leading up to one of the buildings that we were working we were looking at before all right here's another big four-way intersection culmination potentially almost your boss fight area here right we see we've got some like bones and things all kind of scattered all around here uh, and then we've got here's like a dead body submerged in the gunk and then here's some dirt stuff's collapsed perhaps this is a pipe or something and then on this side we've got another statue right and then we've got uh like a little shopping area right we've got a blacksmith we've got an armor smith here's somebody selling fruit and here's just an empty stand here you know a little bench and then we've got all our little sales people here and then another nice big tile here for our four-way intersection underground and we've got four more uh we've got another multiple intersection underground here here's just some tiles another outlet pipe t intersection and then here we just have rooftops of various buildings and then we have the ox and the horse pulling the carts and then we got rooftops so we can get into some rooftop chase scenes here very nice uh we've got a more this looks like this is more of your temple or your church perhaps right so this is the stone floors or the more high-end tavern, right? You got the tables, so a little carpet on the stairs. Here's like a big meeting table or a feast hall. And then you can see that up here, it kind of goes, here's some statues. We've got some hanging sconces. Maybe this is the main, this is the big castle, maybe. Um, you know, we've got some statues here with some more armor. And then we can see we've got spiral staircases on either kind of corner here. This may be a throne room, right? We've got some sort of throne here with a carpet for supplication. And then here's the back corner of the castle, right? So we could build a castle with this, a four-cornered castle. Here's uh, some hallways. And then we have, uh, looks like this is the guards barracks, right? They're playing cards here. Here's uh, some weapon racks and there's a brazier in the hallway there. And then this looks like the last corner of the castle, right? So we've got the other corner. We've got some bed chambers, right? These have some chests for exploring. We have a looks like a drawbridge, another gate. Here's another spiral staircase and a corner piece. Uh, another just large circular meeting room, a well down here. We've got another spiral staircase. Here's looks like a either a table or a drawbridge or something, and another grate. Very cool. All right, and then this one, this one should be a little bit easier to pack up because we do have some full-size tiles, uh, which is a lot more than we did in the last one. So we're gonna start trying to pick up all of our tiles here. So while I continue to pack these away, let me know what you guys think about these various tiles in the comments below. Is this something that you guys would pick up are you excited about these? Were you a big fan of the D&D &D tiles in the past when they were released for other editions? Because they were out for third and fourth, I believe, they made versions of these tiles. Um, so I'm curious to see what you guys think about these tiles. How they, If you were fans of the other tiles, for sure let me know. How did these stack up compared to what you remember from in the past? Are these better, worse? Um, what's your opinion on that if uh, and why so I know why that is if you guys were not a fan of tiles in the past why or why not and does this change your mind about the tiles would you rather get them now based on the way they look what I showed off here or is your opinion pretty much the same your tiles still aren't for you if they did change your mind and you want to get them now uh, when you didn't want to get them previously what happened um, was there something specific in these set of tiles that really blew you away that you're like, oh, I have to have these? Um, and then if, uh, so regardless of folks who have had experience with these in the before, what do you guys think? If this is your first time seeing dungeon tiles, 
what do you think of them? Are they worth your money? Are they worth 20? First of all, are they worth $25? Because let's put that out there, right? There's, that's how much each one of these costs. So each individual one is $25. I mean, if it was $25 for the three, that would be a steal. And I mean, who wouldn't go for that? But $25 for each set of tiles. And again, as per usual with these, I go out, I pick these up, I buy these, and then I review them so that you guys don't have to worry about what a, what's the inside look like. Is it worth my money? I'll spend the money, I'll buy it, and then I'll let you guys know so you guys can decide whether or not to spend your money on it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm still, even though I went through all these, right, and I did spend my money on them, I'm still, jury's still kind of out for me, to be honest with you. I, you know, I looked through all of them, right? I did it all with you guys live to see what I thought of each of them. And, you know, I thought... They're definitely cool pieces to have, right? And I'm sure with the new campaign coming up that I can obviously work these into that for sure and figure out how I would break these tiles up uh, and, and design encounters around all of them, which I'm sure I can definitely do uh, because for years I've just been doing it on a dry erase mat, so this just makes my life a little bit easier. Um... But yeah, I'm not really sure 100% where I how I feel about these guys. Uh, you know, if they're worth it, by the way, we can put all the tiles. These ones I packed up a little bit nicer than the last ones because they were more uniform. So we'll go ahead and put the lid on. So we've got our three sets of tiles here. You know, um, you can't actually tell that there's three, but there definitely is. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'm curious what you guys think. Are these worth 25? Are these worth it, it period? Um, are they worth $25? Would you buy these if they were cheaper? Are you okay with the price point? I mean, aside from just being like, oh, I wish they were free. Uh, I mean, if they were, uh, if they were cheaper, would you be more inclined to buy them? Do you like the price point as it is? I'm curious to know what you guys think. Um, and if you're going to pick them up and, and why, because like I said, I don't really have my, I know that they existed in previous editions, but I never used them. Uh, I've been on the fence about buying them for a while, but I was, you know, you can only tell so much from the back of the box. Now that I've gone through and looked at them all, you guys know what you're getting when you go to buy these. Um, I don't know. I mean, I might try them, but like, I'm also kind of, of like in the realm of, of wanting to dive into Dwarven Forge, and I do have a 3D printer, so I've also been looking at Open Forge 3D printable terrain. Uh, you know, and in some of my games, I have built terrain for certain special epic encounters, um, end of campaign stuff, or very specific things. Like I built the final room uh, for Tomb of Annihilation, uh, for our Tomb of Annihilation season finale, and things like that. So um, this is sort of a nice kind of intermediate step, but I'm curious to see what you guys think because I, like I said, I really don't know how I feel about them. Um, I think it would be very cool if they had some sort of interlockable feature, right? If they had like puzzle piece corners so that they could stick together, but that does limit you and what you could do if they were to have that. Um, perhaps that's some sort of in-between. I know there are some dry erase uh, tiles you can get that have interlockable pieces. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Sorry this video was pretty long, guys. There was a lot to go through. I didn't realize there was so much in each box, which again, you do get a fair amount for $25, but it is still $25 for 16 tiles worth of cardboard. Uh, is that really worth your money? I, I can't really tell you. Depends on how much you should get out of them, I guess. So, anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave your comments about how you feel about it and all that good stuff in the comments section below, and uh, I'll see you next time.